All right, in this video, we're gonna check out, shoot, and review this holographic site by Neo. We'll do a quick unbox and overview, and then we'll take her down in the range and see how she performs. So this is the Neo HH1 holographic site. So let me just start with this awesome box here. This is made out of the same stuff that like your um, rifle carry cases are made out of, like the HDPE plastic there. So I really like this box that it comes in. A uh, little snap lever there, and it's even got uh, little holes there so you can lock it if you want. I'm kind of doing this reverse order. We've already done the testing portion of this. I have to film uh, when I can, so I'm kind of doing this reverse order. So there would be your battery there that's included, so I've already installed that. And then give you a little screen wipe here. And this washer looking doohickey here is actually can be used as a tool for your wind engine elevation, your battery cap there, and also to mount it. I did not use it, I just used a flathead screwdriver, which worked fine, so uh, that's what that's for. And I gotta say, I've had this on and off the rifle probably, well, at least three times now, maybe four, and I'm not really seeing any scratches or anything like that, and especially um, paying attention to this, where I, you know I've had to put it on the rifle fairly tight to make sure you know it doesn't drift or anything like that from the recoil, and I don't really see, I mean, there's a little bit of glare from the camera, but I've not noticed any of like the finish coming off, even though I've snugged that down on the rifle with a sharp flathead several times really good. So seems to be a pretty durable finish there. Um, but they shipped this out. Nice foam padded case, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Uh, they shipped this in a little cardboard box that's a little bit bigger. And in that box, you'll get your Neo sticker there. And then this nice user's manual. If I didn't already say it, it's the HH1. So this is direct competition to the EOTech and the uh, Trigicon, but a, at a much more budget-friendly uh, intro price. So really nice instructions on this. Um, they got some, you know, everything you would expect in here and the operation and all that, and then really good detailed uh, instructions on how to zero it. And uh, what I really wanted to show you guys here, I guess we'll go over the weight here, 7.5 ounces which is uh, a decent amount lighter than the EOTech, for example. I can't remember how much that one weighs, but I know it's at least several ounces more. So um, you're getting a lighter weight package here as well over, like, say, the uh, EOTech. Uh, so there's your battery information. And being a holographic, so it's a laser projection, your battery life, 750 hours there. It does not have shake awake, um, but it does have auto shut off after 30 minutes there. Your reticle, which I'll throw up a... Picture on the screen is a 65 MOA outer ring with a 1 MOA uh, center dot. And I'm still trying to get to this warranty here. So uh, in a way, they have a 10-year warranty, but it's kind of like a 5-year warranty. So you can pause and read that if you want. Um, but in the first 5 years, basically, no questions asked. They'll take care of it as long as it's not abuse or anything like that, which, you know, they outline further here if you want to pause and read any of that um, but after the first five years um, then they'll take care of it for a uh, reduced rate uh, fee if you have any issues from that so kind of a five-year warranty but kind of a 10-year at the same time but as I said you guys can uh, pause and read any of that but uh, even five years there that's a pretty dang good warranty so I'll, I'll, I'm trying to think uh, whatever features I haven't gone over so far i know it's like ip67 waterproof something like that um, real easy to use controls see if you can hear these click or anything so yeah there you can see it turned on again i'll have better imagery up for you of the reticle it's always hard to get camera to focus on these things so you know you turn it down turn it up and to turn it off just press uh, both at the same time, and it's you don't even have to press and hold them. You just press them, and then it shuts off, and then any one will automatically bring it back on to the uh, last brightness setting that you had it on there. So that's most of the specs. I'm not a real spec-oriented guy and just kind of the bare minimum. You do have an awesome, massive screen there, so a real good field of view. Um, on the bottom here, you do have the universal mounting. So some guys are complaining it didn't have a recoil lug, but uh, I seen where someone was comparing it to a EOTech, and the EOTech didn't have a recoil lug either. So you're getting the same hardware as you do with the EOTech. So obviously this is how you would tighten it on your rail there. But 
having that little rounded one there and again i've had this on and off the rifle uh three times now minimum i've not had any issues with it sliding or anything like that because again i snugged it down really good there so i didn't have any issues with it on my uh 20 millimeter rail but with that setup there that will also allow you to, to mount it to a weaver rail as well so there's your frontal view that's from the side there. I guess I'll do some little clicks here so you, we can check those out. Um, one thing I did notice with the, the battery, um, it, it's really nice machined in there. Uh, your thread, so it's, there's no grittiness or anything like that. It was, it's such a weird thing to highlight, but I was really impressed with the threads, uh, how this um, screwed in and out so effortlessly. Um, nice polished threads and smooth and all that. But uh, let me, well, I guess we'll just use this washer thing out of here because I haven't used it yet I was using a screwdriver the whole time like I said I'll do a quick demonstration I got this thing zeroed in because like I said we're doing this reverse order but try to put it back where I had it so let's see that's your uh, windage there so I think it clicks very subtly you can definitely feel them but so here we go we'll go um, right a few clicks yeah, I'm not hearing anything but there's like little bumps in there that you can feel yeah so I would prefer a click but what I'll tell you what's most important is that they actually do what they're supposed to do and move the reticle and that they don't drift under recoil which they have not this thing maintains zero for me no problem Got some pretty long range shots coming up in this video as well, so stay tuned. And then for the elevation, let's see here, let's go, um, I guess I'll be going, well, down then up. Yeah, so I can feel like little bumps where it stops and you could probably see it there, but I'm not hearing any clicks. So not a deal breaker to me whatsoever. I know a lot of people like to hear the clicks. I'm one of those people as well, but again, what's important is that it actually um, works as designed and moves the reticle reliably for side in and then doesn't drift under re recoil, which I've not had any issues uh, pertaining to any of that. <laughs> I think I'm going to refer back to the video and make sure I get these back in the same spots because like I said, I had it uh, zeroed for my rifle, but I think that'll do it for the tabletop portion. So we'll head down to the range now and try her out. All right, got a 50 yard zero on this thing off camera. First few shots with it. Wowzer. I got to go down there and show you guys. I don't know if this will focus, but you see that top red dot there? And yeah, my focus is kind of crappy. I got like three, just kind of three or four plastered all over it there. So uh, pretty good 50 yard zero there. That dot, the center dot in that reticle is so fine and crisp. And that's the other thing I'm noticing. I asked them about this uh, in the live show we had on uh, Chris from the 740 channel, you know, about astigmatism and whatnot, because I have an astigmatism of some sort. Uh, a lot of the dots, the typical red dots, for example, they look blurry to me. Um, now, while this is still not absolutely perfect for me with whatever type of astigmatism I have, it's perfectly functional very crisp lines out here I'm just noticing it's not perfectly clear for me because of my astigmatism and I had some of the family members look through uh, as well and um, one of my family members who had an astigmatism it looked perfectly clear and crisp for them and for the other one uh, they're kind of having the same experience I was but even though I have an astigmatism very fine and crisp um, the lines are so fine and bright this thing is super super bright I have turn it way down so if it's like bright bright sun out in the middle of the desert you're gonna have plenty of brightness with that thing all the way up even might be too bright then so um but definitely no worries about whether this thing is bright enough or not and of course it goes super super dim as well so you can use it at night and not be blinding yourself but man that that dot is so fine and crisp clear out there on my 100 yard gong i mean it's like the size of one of those little bullet impacts you can see out there so fine and crisp and also first impressions i've never used a holographic like this before um so i mean i might have already said it in the video by now but to me it's almost like it's on a tv screen 
but that was like in the house it's definitely way different being out here in the field and have it mounted it up on the rifle and whatnot um i gotta kind of like try to train myself which is not very hard i just noticed like if i try to focus on it like a traditional red dot i do far better if i tell myself don't look at the dot just look past it because that thing it just kind of looks like it's floating out there i don't know how to describe it it's definitely different and i like it better than a traditional red dot um, but if you just look past it and look at your targets it's pretty cool because you can just pay attention to your targets and you just barely move the rifle and it'll be like zoop, and it'll hover right over whatever you're looking at um, so it's it kind of speeds you up on your transitions there compared to if you're staring at the reticle itself if you stare through it and past it which is easy to do because the lines on it are so fine it's almost like it's out there in the field like i don't know 25 30 yards just floating out there in the field it's real interesting so if you can teach yourself to look past it which i'm already i've pretty much already got it down just firing a few rounds through it um it'll work out to your it'll be to your advantage because you can do a lot quicker uh, transitions that way so the experience is definitely neat and i like it better and i'm just i love how fine and crisp that dot is so um on a capable cartridge not the 762 by 39 i have it mounted up on here uh it would be easy to get 500 yard hits on a half scale silhouette with that dot because it's so so fine and there's no glare or blur or starburst pattern on it like i often see on red dots um so Anyways, I'll quit yammering on about, <laughs> sorry, I'm just a little flabbergasted. It's definitely a new experience and I'm loving it so far, but it, I love precision with red dots. I hate big fuzzy red dot due to my astigmatism. I don't like, you know, the five MOA dots. I don't even like three MOA. I usually try to buy two MOA because I want that dot as fine as possible. And this is like a one MOA dot and there's no fuzz or anything. So very precise dot i'm gonna love it shooting long range which we're gonna do later in this video um, but let me run a couple mags out here and try to do some transitions out here freehand it's just too easy off the table uh, but we'll hit this guy over here half scale or third scale silhouette there uh, that guy there half scale silhouettes at 75 of course we got a swinger there we got some little ones out here i'll probably try to take a uh, crack at about six inch targets there and then I got my 16 inch gong back here at 100 yards. Keep in mind this is about twice as hard recoiling as 5.56 because I'm using a 762 by 39 cartridge in this 6 pound ish rifle so recovery time's a little longer. Just turn the brightness up one click here. Here's a better look at what we just did here for you guys. 75 twice and then 100 on your left. Six inch plate at 75 on your right. All right. That one miss at 100 yards is my fault. I pulled it high. I'm not the best uh, freehand like that. So I'll load up and spin a few off from the table here. You know, actually what I'll do first, I'll go out there and crouch. I'll be a little more steady that way. Again, this is 762 by 39, so the recovery time from recoil is longer. more rounds out of this box and I got one more left for the long range you gotta save them I'm having a little fun out here try to get those little guys out there squatting down there so I do it off the bench easy but let's see here so those are out 75 I'm gonna hit those little ones there they're about six to eight inch plates I'm gonna go out there and crouch and hit those
I'll miss that one guy once because it was almost perfectly parallel, if that's correct terminology. Turning sideways on me there, making real skinny targets, but 75 yards. Which that reminds me, I need to show you that 50-yard uh, grouping down here. And I wasn't even really going for accuracy. I was just, you know, getting it rudimentarily zeroed. So not my best shots, but it was still just stacking them on top of each other. Yeah, my first shot hit over here, and then I had one, two, three existing holes. So I brought it over to the right zone and went a little too far and hit that existing hole there from a previous video. And then it just stacked like four right here, right on the dot, without even really trying. So, um, again, because that dot is so fine and crisp, I'm able to print real nice tight groups as if I had a scope up on there. I got one more box of these, so we'll save that for the rifle range. I'm going to get this guy out at least 300 yards. That right there was $26 in ammo. That's going to put us at 39 once I use those. Uh, but again, I'm shooting 7.62 by 39. Wanted to give it a little better test. 7.62 by 39 Anderson here. This thing is a rattle trap. It's super lightweight, so a lot more recoil than uh, your 5.56. .5 so it's a, a lot better test for the optic there, which, by the way, again, in the live chat, at the uh, Chris from 740 channel. Um, I asked them about how much recoil this can handle and uh, they told me how they took it down to a range and let the guys mount it up to a bunch of different machine guns and just run the crap out of it and they all held zero according to them so no issues there. I mean if it can handle a freaking machine gun then it should be able to handle semi-auto no problem but you know they ran the crap out of it on machine guns. I also asked about 12 gauge. Guy said he had it on a 12 gauge and still holds zero and all that so it should be a pretty tough optic um but again as i probably said earlier in the video they got like a 10-year warranty on these anyways so but yeah let's head down to the rifle range and we'll take some long range shots with it or at least medium long range there and uh we'll wrap this up so between that filming and this filming i actually dismounted the optic and remounted it here at the range so i picked a random piece of debris down here at 100 yards to check zero and surprisingly it held zero after i reinstalled it so i'm aiming at the very bottom of that piece of white debris there well you just saw it there it hit right at the very bottom of that white debris about centered between that barrel and the pallet all right here we are down at the rifle range Got the Neo up there, same ammunition. Now remember, we're zeroed for like 50 yards, so I'm just going to go ahead and go straight for 300 out, out here. So obviously, going to have some bullet drop, especially with the 7.62 by 39. It does not shoot as flat as, you know, your 223, 5.56. Five, um, so basically just going to aim high and... And that's a 16 inch plate down there, by the way. So I'm going to start you guys out zoomed in. Uh, in case I don't spot it with my naked eye, which is likely because it rained out here, so it's not going to kick up dust or anything like that. So in case I need to see it, we'll stay zoomed in here first, but I'll get you a few. What the hell is going on over here? Zoomed out. It was like somebody threw a giant branch or something, or like a tree was falling down. I don't know. Sorry for the distraction. It was loud as hell. I hope you guys can hear that. Anyways, we'll start zoomed in here and then I'll get some zoomed out. Well, there you go. And... The height looks good, so I wish I had a better focus for you guys there, but it looks like we're averaging off to the right there. So get the one zoomed out now, so that was pretty easy. And yeah, that crisp dot there again, it just makes it super easy because it's very easy. It's so, so much smaller than that plate out there at 300 yards.
Now, I should just quit while I'm ahead. Um, 300 was easy. So I know I could do 400. I would just have to aim like a foot and a half to two feet high. Uh, so I know I can do 400 based off of how easy 300 was. So I'm really going to stretch the limits here. I'm not expecting a whole lot. Again, I should probably quit while I'm ahead, but I'm going to move her down there 500 yards and see if we can get some hit at 500. So there's our uh, grouping, if you will, down here at 300. And I got... Oh, it's still, st still sticky <laughs> from painting it. I got small hands in it pretty much the size of my hand there for 300 yards. And like I said, I wasn't even going for, you know, accuracy, not trying to print a group or anything. I was just letting them rip. So that's 300 yards. All right. Down there, the full 500 now. So let's see what we can do. Now I only had just a few rounds left, so unfortunately I did not have the right aim point above the target here. I have no doubt in my mind, especially based off this group you'll see on the dirt here, that I could get these hits at 500 yards with that fine one MOA dot that this thing had. So kind of hard to see in the footage here, but they're hitting about two gongs low there. So anyways, you probably noticed me about a thousand times now mention how much I like that little Chris dot there. That's the main takeaway for me, I guess. Uh, the, the reason I like dots and now this holographic here is because they're more precise. They give you more precision than, you know, your typical iron sights because, uh, that you know, the dot's typically a lot smaller than what you're seeing with your iron sights. So uh, a good bit amount of better precision from a, a typical dot than what you get with iron sights. Obviously not quite as much as a scope. Um, you could set this up with a magnifier on the back so you could you could, you know get some zoom with it. That would work out pretty well, I would imagine. Uh, but generally with a dot, you know, I'm coming somewhere in usable range between iron sights and a scope there. Uh, but with this thing having such a fine, crisp dot there being so small and precise, um, it's greatly extending that range over a traditional red dot for me. Again, if I actually knew where to held or re-zeroed for that distance and with a flatter shooting cartridge. I'm going to quit rambling on here, though. I love it. I can definitely see the advantages of this over a traditional red dot. Again, it's a little different. Out in the field, it looks like it's like hovering down there out in the field. And you can just look past it, so it gives you a little bit quicker transition that way. It's supposed to be better for people with an astigmatism. And again, that is the smallest, finest dot I've ever seen, so it must be working. And uh, again, that's the takeaway, the highlight for me is how fine and crisp that dot is because it really lets me extend my range. I really like shooting uh, stuff long range. You know, I, I train for some up-close combat stuff like we did at the other range there, but I love coming out here and stretching it out. And um, it's nice to be able to take these long-range shots uh, without a scope on there if I needed to in you know, a real-life situation, whether it be hunting, survival, or, or worse. So yeah, definitely a good contender here to the EOTech and the Trigicon holographics. Um, this comes in, you know, way less than those. I think right now, if you guys uh, hop on quick enough, uh, this is like 320 on Amazon right now. Again, there'd be a link in the description. Um, and when we were talking on the 740 show, uh, they said that's, you know, it's only going to last for like a week or two. By the time this video posts, you might only have a few days left. I think they said uh, the regular retail on this was like, 450 500 something like that which still puts it less than a uh, eotech or a trigicon but right now since it's brand new and they're trying to make a name for themselves uh, you can get these around 300 bucks at least for the next couple days after this post so again link in the description go check it out if you guys want to get yourself any of the other products you see me using my videos safety glasses earmuffs shooting bag there target stand paper targets steel targets range finder and way more links in the description for all of that but thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you on the next one.